The opulent surroundings of Monte Carlo provide the perfect backdrop for Formula One. And whilst there was a chance for Christian Horner to shoot the breeze with Nicky Lauda, the question was, could Red Bull get the better of Mercedes in Monaco? The early pace setter was Nico Rosberg, as he looked to claw back an advantage over Mercedes teammate Lewis Hamilton. And after Rosberg went nearly half a second quicker than his teammate, Hamilton pulled out all the stops to finally claim top spot with a time of 1 minute 18.2. A heavy shower at lunchtime left the track wet and a long delay before cars began to emerge in FP2. So with conditions tricky, it was a cautious start to the session with only Valtteri Bottas venturing out early on. But with the track drying out, times began to tumble. With Jensen Button using all his experience to guide his McLaren round the streets of Monte Carlo to go nearly a second quicker than Sebastian Vettel. But topping the timesheet was Fernando Alonso, the Ferrari dancing through the streets at the critical moment, taking advantage of what were then less than ideal conditions, and once again proving that the double Monaco race winner must never be discounted. What's going on guys, over here today bringing my F1 2014 Ultra Modded Career Mode we're here for episode 25 of the overall F1 Career Mode here for a 100% race around the Monaco Grand Prix round 6 of this calendar. Monaco obviously quite an important part of it is qualifying so I thought you know what we're starting from 22nd place but I'll go and do a hot lap in practice and commentate it over for you guys so here we go we're going to go to practice and this is going to be a hot lap around Monaco just to show you guys what we're faced with today. So here we are on the lap of Monaco, opening DLRS down to the first corner, into second gear, locking up a little bit on the right tyre there on the front, and having to go opposite lock as well to save the rear of the car, but no harm done, no, not too much time lost. Now we climb up the hill towards the next section now, into third gear, chucking it left very close to the wall here in Casino Square, on the right-hander, still in third gear to get the best revs, and here we go, down to Mirabeau now, into second gear, and first briefly there for a second, and now down to the hairpin, the slowest corner in Formula 1 in first gear, going down to about 32 miles per hour, now in second gear, letting the car roll through this section now, through the right-hander, breaking a little bit, and now getting the power down as early as we dare, through the Monaco Tunnel now, here we go, climb up the gears, full throttle obviously, downforce levels not a worry here and now down to this very tricky chicane into second gear we want to chuck it left but then try and chuck it as early as we can on the right we didn't do that actually perfectly we went a bit wide there now through this left hander very tricky into third gear really get close to the barriers you feel like when you hit that bump you're going to lose the car now through the swim pool section very tight chicane went to first gear then second had to catch the rear there as well lost it a little bit down to Raskas now first gear and second gear sort of drifting it through these corners now through the last corner getting very wide there lucky not to hit the wall but we make it through and there's going to be a hot lap of the Monaco Grand Prix and that is what we're going to face for 78 laps of this Grand Prix guys a very tough track but a very fun one when you nail the lap uh, indeed one of my favorite circuits to drive when you nail it when you get in a rhythm rhythm it really is a nice track so here we go looking at the setup now we've also got a very different livery today for the Monaco Grand Prix we've got some new sponsors some alcoholic sponsors being here at Monaco with all the parties and also a very nice new side pod which you'll see in the race and obviously at the end with a highlight reel so here we go for the strategy it looks like it's going to be a one stop our engineers are telling us but as you can see also by the screen there's a 41% chance of rain in the race as well so definitely not going to be a one stop but here we go revving up to the Monaco Grand Prix the jewel in the Formula 1 calendar So here we are on the grid of the Principality of Monaco here for round six of our season. Here we go to five red lights for the Monaco Grand Prix. 78 laps ahead of us. Here we go and we are off and we're going to have to be very careful into the first corner. Obviously here the street circuit on Monaco, a uh, very tight circuit. We are gonna, we're going to have to be very patient here really down to the first corner now. Again, taking it very cautiously, just seeing where we can go on the left hand side there of uh, which was Ericsson there and also Bianchi in the Marussia. And here we go up to 20th place. So not the most electrifying start here. But as I said, we have to be very patient here. Maldonado brake checking us a little bit. We're going to try maybe go around the right-hand side of him. But again, getting very close there on the left-hand side of our front wing there. We're going to have to be very careful with the realistic damage. We just uh, need to be patient. It's a waiting game, really. Going down the inside of all these cars now towards Mirabeau. Like I said, just need to be patient and wait for the opportunity. And it will fall into us. On to uh, P18 now down the inside of uh, Kobayashi there into the hairpin. And we've got him there for 18th place. So, yeah, like I said, just need to be patient 
and wait for the moves to come to us. We don't need to make things happen for us. They will eventually come to us because I think we have the pace overall to really beat most of these AO cars. Uh, we'll have to see about the Mercedes and maybe my teammate, but definitely the rest of the cars, I think we can definitely beat them today on pure pace. So we just have to wait and be patient. Now, here we go on the back of Chilton, going down the inside of Chilton, very close to the wall there. And we made that move stick. That was a lovely move, actually, on Chilton there for P17. Very close to the wall on the right-hand side there, going to Raskas. We made the move stick, so we're up to 17th place now, going into the back of Gutierrez. Hopefully in the next few laps now, the Sauber there in front of us as we climb up towards that hill through the Casino Square section. So here we go into lap two, later on lap two down the Monaco Tunnel. Here we go, can we try and get him? We're going to go on the inside, that was very close to the wall. It was bouncing around on the bumps of Monaco here, and we've got Gutierrez there for 16th place. That was very close actually, because the bumps and the tunnel were making it very close to me hitting Gutierrez or the wall indeed. So a really nice move there to get P16. And now on lap three, we're on the back of Grosjean here in his Lotus. We're getting very close to his gearbox here. What can we do? Down towards Mirabeau. We're going to think about it. Go down the inside. Last minute ditch move. And we've made the move stick there. Down to the hairpin now. And that's a place on Grosjean up to uh, P15 there. And now we're behind Suttil now going through this next section on the right-hander towards that Monaco tunnel. So hopefully we'll be able to overtake Suttil and keep the momentum up. We're just really powering through the grid so far, making our way every few laps, overtaking a few cars here. So there's very good progress at the moment. Only P P15 at the moment, but obviously we're only lap 3 of 78. So we've got plenty of laps to go. And Suttil going very slowly there in Chicane. And he's actually lopped off a bit of his front wing there. And I made the move stick for 14th place there. So very surprising. Didn't, didn't think we are going to make the move there. But, uh, you know, the opportunity was there. And we took it, just like I said before. We just maybe have to wait for the moves to come to us. So now, here onto lap 5 now. Behind Joring Verne in the sister Red Bull team of the Toro Rosso car. Here we go. Right up his gearbox now. We're going to make another move down the inside of Raskas. There we go. Got very close to the wall there on the right-hand side. Getting very close. Uh, kind of uh, dancing with the barriers as a... Uh, as the saying is, I think, uh, there into Raskas for P13 there on John Verne in his Toro Rosso. Rosberg sets a fast lap to go on pretty so far. We're right behind Perez now. We've got a brilliant exit on that, uh, on that first turn there. We set the fast lap the Grand Prix so far now. Can we try and make a move on Perez? No, we tried maybe thinking round down the inside of that corner, but that would have just turned into a kind of a, a very nasty accident if we tried to do it because he was always going to cut in. But here we go down the inside of Perez here. Now he's still going to try and give us some room, but he's also defending very well down the inside now of Perez. And we've got the move stick for, 20, uh, for 12th place there. And that was very, very close with Perez. He was really giving me a good fight, and that was a good overtake in the end to do the little switch back. He thought I was maybe going to try around the outside, but I did down the inside of the hairpin. So here we go on lap 9 now on the back of Jensen Button, P11, just outside the points here. And we're setting the fastest sectors of the Grand Prix so far. So again, going really fast here. Can we make a move on Jensen Button? We tried to maybe do something in Raskas. Didn't work out for us. So now here we go down the pits right now. Got DRS as well. So here we go. Should be maybe a nice move down the inside. Here we go with DRS down the inside. Locking up a little bit on the right tyre. But Button gives us the space we deserve. Thank you very much to him. And we're up into 11th place up the hill now. And so just outside the points. So we can see points ahead of us in P10, which is Massa there in the Williams. Very surprising to see Willi uh, Williams. So, uh, oh God, there's a safety car. So safety car has been deployed. So I was just going to say we could be on the back of Massa in 10th place. Surprising to see him there. But a safety car has been deployed. So we've got to worry about that now. So obviously there's no point in pitting because our pit stop is uh, scheduled around lap 32. I don't see the rain coming down anytime soon, so we're just going to stick it out here. So here onto lap 12, the safety car is in this lap. It's been two laps of the safety car. Here we go. Can we make a good restart? doesn't look like it. It looks like Massa is getting massively away from us. And uh, we lose the rear a bit through that last corner, and that wasn't a good restart at all. And we're still in 11th place, nowhere near Massa at the moment. Hopefully we can close up to him in the first corner. It seems like we can get a really good exit on the AI in the first corner there as uh, I'm going in second gear and just revving it quite high there. Now here until lap 13, we're right behind Massa in the swing pool section. Or maybe make a move in the Rask cast. Can we maybe do it? No, we tried maybe around the outside. We're going to do the switch back down the inside. This last corner locking up. Oh my God. Jesus Christ, that had me in stitches. Wow. That was very close to hitting the wall there on the inside corner. But here we go. We're still side by side with Massa. The move's not done yet. Down the inside of this corner now on the first turn. And now we've got the place done for 10th place. But, ooh, I had to hold my breath there a tiny bit through the last corner. That was very close to the barrier watching it back. 
Very, very close. Could have been a nasty accident on the last corner, but we made it stick there. Massa giving us the room. And uh, again, the AI giving us some really nice respect here, having some nice battles here, here and there. And now here in P10 on lap 15, the behind Kevin Magnussen now. We caught up to him. Got a brilliant exit on the first turn. Here we go. Side by side with uh, Magnussen up the hill. Can we make it stick? Yes, we can for P9. Awesome move there. Very, very nice exit on turn one to get Magnussen there. So now we're in P9 behind Kvyat in P8. Can we try and get him in the later lap? Here we go onto lap 16. We're right behind Kvyat now. We're getting really closing up him on the left-hander. He's going very slowly there. Obviously, Torosso lack of downforce is uh, not helping him. And here we go down the inside maybe of Mirabeau. No, we think better of it because Kvyat did have the corner. Maybe down the inside of here in the hairpin. Yes, we do. Just about a very late move there. Kvyat didn't even know it was going to happen, I don't think. I think he was falling asleep a little bit, as they say, falling asleep on the wheel. And uh, we made that move for 8th place, I don't think he even knew about it, so we've just taken that 8th place here, and now Hulkenberg in 7th place, he's quite some away, some uh, some uh, seconds away, so I think it's going to be a bit of time before we get up to him, indeed it's going to be up to uh, lap 21, so 5 laps later, we finally caught up to Hulkenberg now in the Force India, he's really defending quite well here as we try to maybe go down the inside, but look at the way he's placing his car, he's doing some really good car placement at the moment, and we're still not able to get him in the hairpin as well, so Hulkenberg, known for his good defending in real life here in the game, he is also doing the same, really placing the car really well here at the moment, trying to get him, but just no use, he really places the car well, he knows when to brake and accelerate the perfect points, uh, because usually you can get the AI in the hairpin there, but he did great work to kind of block me off, and here, maybe go down the inside. Oh my god, it's going to be a late move there. Surely that's not going to work. Wow, that was a very audacious attempt, you must say, uh, for P8, for P7 there on Hulkenberg. It was never really going to work, and Hulkenberg squeezed me out and uh, just showed it wasn't really going to work anyway. So here now onto lap 22, We're still behind the Hulkenberg, and we've actually caught up to the car in front of us, which I think is Valtteri Bottas. But here we go around the outside of Hulkenberg. Awesome move there, a casino square. We caused a collision, though. Apparently, the game thought we closed caused a collision. We did tap Hulkenberg a little bit, but we couldn't really go anywhere, and we were considerably faster on the apex speed than him, so I couldn't really do much, and we made the move anyway, and uh, you know, no qualms. So we're up to P7 now on Hulkenberg. We're right behind Bottas now for P6. Let's hope we can get him in the next few laps here onto lap 22. As you can see, the clouds are coming down as well, so I think it might stop be starting to rain soon. It is definitely more overcast than it was previously. Uh, on the previous lap. So here we go, right behind Bottas. Can we make, maybe make a move down? Raskat, yes we can. Down the inside yet again. So close to the wall. These have been some actually really enjoyable moves to watch really as we get, we're getting very close to the wall but yet not breaking our front wing, not crashing into them. Very nice to watch really in P6 now on lap 23. So the next car along is Kimi Raikkonen, the Iceman in the Ferrari. Here we go on lap 29. It's been some way, eight laps now. Uh, since that overtake on Bottas now, we're right behind Raikkonen now into this uh, swim pool section. You can see it is definitely overcast now, so it looks like it might be time, uh, you know, to maybe start looking out at the clouds. It might be starting to rain here. I think I actually saw a few specks of rain there on the camera just then. But we're right behind Raikkonen. It's being very tough to uh, try and overtake him as he's got the kind of uh, straight line speed on us. The Ferrari, actually the fastest car in a straight line in this game, surprisingly, which is sort of a uh, weird kind of glitch that shouldn't have been in the game, but for some reason they are. So uh, we, we're going to have to try and counter that. So here we go up towards Casino Square and we cut later on to lap 30 now. Let's try and overtake Raikkonen down the inside. No, down the outside of uh, Raskas. Here we go. We're tapping his rear tyre. But here we go around the outside of Raikkonen on the last corner. What a move there for P4. Some lovely overtake going on here at the moment in the Monaco Grand Prix. Overtaking Kimi Raikkonen in the Ferrari. It's starting to rain, I think. A double lock-up there. No harm's done. I kept my cool there with a double lock-up. That could have been actually quite bad. And Grosjean. What on earth was going on there? Grosjean getting very close to us with blue flags. But now, cutting on to lap 36, it is definitely time for the intermediate tyres, as you can see. We cut later on. I didn't show you the period where it got from dry to wet, but right now it's definitely wet now. It's time for the intermediate tyres. I've gone four laps longer than my pit crew wanted me to on the option tyres. As you can see, the tyres are very worn. I've lost a little bit of my front wing as well in the lap because uh, it is uh, raining very hard. You can see the spits of rain on my camera now. So it is definitely time for the intermediate tyres, the green wall tyre. Here we go. It's going to be a bit of a slower pit stop, obviously, because we're Changing that front wing. There you go. There you see. New front wing going on there with the absolute sponsor there. That alcoholic drink. Being here in Monaco, I thought it would be fitting to put a few alcoholic sponsors on the car. Seeing as there's so many boat parties here at Monaco. But uh, nevertheless, we, uh, I digress. Here we go. We're P1 at the moment. That's only because we stayed out quite a long time. So are we going to stay out in P1? I think we might. I think we might have just got the lead of Monaco for some random reason. I think we just... Absolutely did a stunner. I think that's the only way I can say it. I think we did an absolute stunner, lads. I think that was an absolute what wonder of a strategy there. We stayed out 
four laps longer, struggled through the rain, while the AI pit twice for their second not dry tyre stint, and then the intermediate tyres, and we're in first place now at the moment. But now on to lap 40, it may not be going so swimmingly now, because uh, talking about swimming, we're in an absolute monsoon here at Monaco. The rain has already come down, it's time for the full wet tyres. You can see the intermediate tyres are completely cold, we have to cut the chicane there. And it is time to get the wet tyres out because my car is feeling like an absolute boat at the moment. It's time for the wet tyres now. Coming into the pits now uh, in P1, but we've lost quite a lot of time to the AI uh, struggling on the intermediate tyres. I think they've all pit already for wet tyres. I've gone one more lap than them on the intermediate. So this may bite us in the back because let's see as we come out. A slow pit stop once again because we have to change the front wing yet again. Because as you, as you saw previously, we did lose a bit of our front wing. But I think we are going to lose first place here because the AI did make their pit stop one lap earlier. So they must be going that much faster. So here we come out of the box here. And we're coming out of the pit lane and my car is going very slowly at the moment. And I can tell you that's actually because my wheel stopped working momentarily for some random reason. I came out of the pits, put my foot on the accelerator pedal and my wheel just kind of turned off for a bit and then turned back on. Which is a bit weird. First time that's happened. Very strange, but we lost first place anyway before that problem happened, but we also lost second place uh, to Rosberg. So we're in P3 at the moment. I think we maybe would have been P2 if not for my wheel kind of uh, stopping momentarily. But speaking of Rosberg, we're right behind him now on lap 42. And speaking of the rain, actually, you can see there's a lot more spray. I mentioned this in uh, China. I've got a new mod that is uh, called the Storm Mod, and that makes the spray in the rain so much bigger and so it feels like it's raining a lot more and the spray is unbearable behind these AI cars makes it a lot more trickier and I think a lot more realistic so I hope you guys enjoy this mod and watching it uh, in the coming laps because it really is going to affect how I'm going to try and attack these AI because you get so close to them and you just can't really see them especially from a car's length back we're going to try and maybe make a move down the inside of Rosberg here it's going to be a bold move in the wet what a, what a move we had to do a little drift there power slide there you can see on the replay camera a little power slide there to get through to second place but We've made the move stick for second place, and now we're going to chase after Alonso here in the podium positions, and we've definitely got the pace here in the wet. Can we try and get Alonso? He's a few uh, a few, a few seconds down the lap here, but trying to get him here onto lap 46 now, closing on the back of him. But he can see the spray is just so unbearable. You can hardly see the AI car. Look, especially here. It's, all I can see is the red dot just about in the distance. A very nice mod. I highly recommend it. The Storm mod. Very good mod for the rain here. But now here we go on the back of Alonso. Can we maybe get him? We're right on the back of his gearbox almost. Through Casino Square. Really on the back of his uh, gearbox round. Can we try and make him move down the inside? No, we think better of it as Alonso places his car very well. You can see the water dri uh, driplets coming through. Going to maybe still try and make him move. Nope. Alonso again. Doing what sort of Hulkenberg did. Making sure he brakes and accelerates properly at the right time. Just make sure... I can't make a move on him, and he's doing a really good job here at the moment, Alonso, defending first place, and now it's still onto lap 47. No, you... Oh, safety car. Safety car's been deployed. Okay, that will make things a bit more interesting. Safety car's been deployed, so that means two more laps under the safety car, and uh, that's going to be a bit, bit more interesting because it will mean that uh, we're going to have to kind of do a reset, and... Vettel looks like he's uh, behind us now in third place, so he's overtaking Rosberg somehow. So as I said, uh, it's going to be a hard reset, so we're right here behind Alonso, but now Vettel is right under me as well, so we're going to have to be wary of him. Obviously my teammate has been trouncing us in the last few races, so hopefully he won't get the jump on us, so we want to try and attack Alonso, but obviously he'll want to try and attack us. So here onto lap 50, going through the first corner, getting a bit of oversteer there. It's going to be very tricky, the rain is still coming down I believe, so it's going to be very tricky now going to lap 51. Right behind Alonso, we're closer than ever. Can we maybe make a move into the Casino Square section? Here we go, around the outside of Alonso. Going to try it. Oh my word, we've just made that move. Around the outside of Alonso there. Not on Casino Square, the name I've forgotten the corner of, but... Oh my god, that was an absolute stunner of a move, I must say. That was a great move on Alonso around the outside in full wet conditions, I must say. That was a great, that was great stuff to watch. So here onto lap 63 now. We're in first place at the moment on the Monaco Grand Prix. And we're trying to defend it as best we can. The rain has stopped a bit. And I think it is time for intermediate tyres, I think, actually. Because uh, you can see the uh, the clouds are parting. The sun is coming through. So it's time for the intermediate tyres here, I think. So here we come into the pit box for our green wall intermediate tyres. We're going to have to also do a front wing change because we lost a little bit of our end plate there in the wet period, defending our first place position. And it looks like Vettel's into second place. Hamilton third at the moment. So on to lap 67 now. Things have changed a little bit. Hamilton's now in second place. Vettel is down to third. Alonso, no idea where he is. I think he might be in fourth at the moment. I'm not too sure. He sort of dropped off the face of the planet when uh, I started defending. And a safety car again. Wow, three safety cars in a 100% one, race. Never actually seen that in this game yet. Uh, first time for me. 
on F1 2014 and we've had three safety cars in a race so someone's obviously crashed somewhere so safety car deploys we're still in first place we've got a healthy lead at the moment I think we're going to safely come through the first place at the moment unless we muck something up and here onto lap 68 uh, it's actually the first lap of the safety car so far and we actually didn't come into the pits now for the dry option tyres but it's definitely dried out here on track and it looks like all the AI cars are going to follow me in his suit so Vettel actually getting stacked there and that's definitely not on purpose Wink, wink. A <laughs> uh, little, uh, little stab in the mat there for Vettel. He has uh, trounced us a little bit, so I'm getting my own payback. I'm winning the race, and I'm also holding him up. A uh, little evil laugh there, if you will. So here we go, in first place in the moment. Safety car is still out. Second lap of the safety car, and it will come in in this next lap. But I think we can safely say we're going to get the lead of this race once again into P1. 12 cars left in this Grand Prix. So the realistic damage has taken its toll on the grid. But here we go, guys. On to the last lap of the Grand Prix. On the last few corners through Raskas. Here we go. We're going to get first place in the Monaco Grand Prix. Vettel in second place at the moment, surprisingly. Making a 1-2 for Red Bull. But here we go. We've got the win at the Monaco Grand Prix. Shit. So there you have it guys, we have won the Monaco Grand Prix, we made it a 1-2 for Red Bull as well as Vettel somehow got second place there, the young Dana K. Magnussen got third place in the McLaren but we have won the Monaco Grand Prix, that'll be great for our championship to come back at Vettel, uh, Danny Kvyat got fourth place, Button in fifth, Joring Verne sixth, Raikkonen seventh, eighth Gutierrez, ninth Grosjean and wow would you look at that, well yeah hashtag Forger Jules. Bianchi, fittingly, in this race, got 10th place. Uh, you know, we're all thinking of you, Jules, and we hope you make a speed of recovery. But uh, on a much lighter note, there we go. We've closed up on Vettel now. We're up to uh, P2 now in the championship. Vettel still got a lead in the championship, so surprisingly, it's a 1-2 for Red Bull in the championship. Didn't think I'd be saying that, really, at the beginning of the season, but great job there. If you guys did enjoy that episode, then do give it a like. Comment below what you thought. I thought that was an absolute stunner of a race. Great race win there. If you guys did enjoy it, once again, give it a like. Comment below what you thought. Subscribe if you're new for weekly F1 content just like this. I've been Arifa. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. That's the Constructors title there. We're first place in the moment with Red Bull Racing. But yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I've been Arifa and I'll see you guys next time.